the Dodgers president of baseball operations, Andrew Friedman. Andrew, how are you doing? How is the family? I know they're probably not used to you being around this much in the month of April. That's for sure. And, uh, you know, obviously it's surreal times uh, for everybody. And, you know, from my standpoint, I'm trying the best I can to have uh, the best perspective uh, possible and to find silver linings. And obviously, a huge silver lining has been uh, the unexpected time with my kids. Um, yeah, they're 10, 7, and 4. And usually around this time, uh, traveling to see amateur players with our big league team, you know, time is hard to come by uh, as the season kicks off. And so that has been unexpected and something that, uh, you know, I'll look back on fondly and something I think my kids are going to remember forever. Yeah, they certainly will remember it forever. But I know that there's when you're a GM, you're president of baseball operations, there's not usually very much downtime. So with no games at all to watch right now in any sport and no players in baseball to really evaluate on a day to day basis, how do you spend all of this free time with your kids, with your wife there at home? Yeah, it's funny. It's something that uh, it's actually been incredibly busy. And I get to the end of each day and I've been slammed during the day. And I try to think back on what I accomplished that day. And it's not always crystal clear to me. Um, you know, there's a lot of conversations, obviously, with Major League Baseball, uh, with other teams, just kind of talking about best practices with our own players. And, you know, the expectation and, and thought are is that we're going to play. And so, you know, just making sure our guys are in the best position and spot to hit the ground running when the bell rings. Um, and also the draft, you know, that's going to go on, you know, somewhat business as usual. Obviously, the rounds will be reduced, but uh, really starting to get into that and dig into that. And our amateur staff has been hosting, uh, you know, kind of daily conference calls and really breaking down players and what looks like will probably be a virtual draft. Okay, well, I mean, you can hear it in your answer there and in your voice, Andrew. There seems to be a growing optimism now that we're going to have a baseball season here in 2020. How often are you talking to Commissioner Manfred? You talked about those discussions, maybe other MLB officials, maybe even some medical experts about where we are at in this pandemic as it relates to the game coming back. Yeah, and it's obviously tricky in that there are so many unknowns, and I think each week something else, you know, changes and you know, we, we look back at what we thought a week before and can't believe we thought that. And so things are, are pretty uh, fluid right now. Um, there's a lot of spitballing of plans. And so I think the commissioner's office is doing a great job of staying connected with teams and just bouncing different scenarios off and trying to get a feel for what's more uh, viable than others. And, you know, as we continue to learn more, certain plans will kind of go by the wayside and others will, you know, get some legs to it. So there's a lot of spitballing, a lot of different ideas. You know, the thing that leaves me the most optimistic is the fact that everybody wants this to happen. You know, players, owners, Major League Baseball, union, you know, everybody's interests are perfectly aligned for this to happen. And so I can't imagine we can't be industrious enough to figure out something right that works and allows for the best players in the world, you know, for people at home to be able to enjoy them at the very least on TV. So it sounds like it could be just a matter of when we have a start to the season. And I've heard that maybe you call these go days. These are the possible dates discussed with the coaching staff about when we might see a green light to start the season. So do you have different go days in mind? Do you have two or three different go days that you guys are planning for? You know, it's funny. It's one of those things that as we were thinking about this, I don't know, six weeks ago and trying to figure out how to be as flexible and nimble as we could be with all the unknowns, it really came down to our starting pitchers. Our relievers will have plenty of time to be ready. Our hitters, our position players are going to have plenty of time to get ready. It's really our starting pitchers and trying to build them up to you know, kind of where they were uh, when everything uh, screeched to a halt there and trying to build them up to six innings, kind of 90 pitches, ideally, to start the year. And, you know, with not knowing the exact start date, that's tricky. Um, but then it started to bleed into something else that we were, uh, you know, kind of mindful of in the last month, which is no matter what, it looks like this is going to be an abbreviated season. And for some of our pitchers, that's a really good thing. It's fine. And for others who are looking to kind of build on, their workload and where they were previously 
um, you know, that could have a spillover into 2021. And so for those guys, you can start to ramp them up a little more quickly and have them, you know, kind of ready to go. And others, it's, you know, it, it's really a case by case, but, you know, Mark Pryor and uh, Connor McGinnis have done a great job of staying connected with our pitchers and making sure they're in a good spot. Well, in Major League Baseball, Andrew, they've talked about keeping everything possible on the table, and you've talked about even spitballing a little bit. There have been multiple reports here in the past two days, really, saying Major League Baseball would like to have a plan in place by the end of May or maybe the latest early June, give players a week to, to get to where they need to be, have three weeks for another spring training, and then begin the season by July. And I know this is a fluid situation. You've talked about it. But from the conversations you've had, is that a likely scenario at this moment? It's tough to characterize likely as anything is likely right now. Um, I'm all in on that, and I think everybody is, and assuming that it is a safe thing to do um, and, uh, you know, something that we can pull off logistically, then I think everybody is in on making that happen. Again, last week, you know, there was a lot of media buzz about the three-city plan. The week before that, it was about Arizona. And I think what that speaks to is that a few of the plans have been spitballed, have kind of gotten out into the public realm. I think it's more that there is just no leader in the clubhouse right now. Um, they're all just kind of up on the wall. And, you know, the I saw the USA Today one today, and obviously there's different local municipalities where you can start playing next week if you wanted to, and others that you can't. And so you have to come up with something that works for all 30 teams and that information is kind of changing pretty rapidly. And that is obviously a huge driver in what ultimately uh, happens and something that obviously we're staying really connected with and just trying to understand the landscape as best we can. One last thing for you, Andrew. I know we're all optimistic, and you're optimistic as well, that we're going to have some kind of a season. But numerous baseball writers, they've already put it out there. It's not me saying it, but they're saying it is possible that we never get to see Mookie Betts play games that count for the Dodgers if the entire season is wiped out, worst-case scenario. Is that something that all keeps you up at night? Um, no, it probably will if that played out that way. Um, but right now, I think, you know, things have been so busy, and it's hard to look out much past a day, a week at a time. And so, you know, I certainly appreciate and understand that that is a possibility. Uh, I'm optimistic that that won't be the case. Uh, but if it were to play out that way, you know, obviously then I'll have, you know, more thoughts on it. But right now our focus is on, you know, having him be a, a real key piece in us winning a championship in 2020. Well, obviously, Andrew, we hope this optimism continues to grow and we see you guys back on the field, whether it's in Arizona, perhaps at Dodger Stadium, getting ready for a final opening day here in 2020 year. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. I like the sounds of that and look forward to joining you uh, on a postgame show after we win, uh, after we win.